Hey guys, I have uncovered a lot that I wanted to share with you. Uh, while I was doing my research on blockchain and cryptocurrency for the past year or so, I ended up finding the last piece of a puzzle that I've been searching for for a very long time. Um, it was a piece of the puzzle to the riddle that's found in the Bible from the book of Revelation about the mark of the beast and 666. Um, so, you know, I want to discuss in this video uh, what I believe is the mark of the beast and what 666 is and if I've really, you know, solved the puzzle um, or the riddle that's, you know, that's been, that, that could be considered the mother of all riddles. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So most of you have probably heard about 666 and the mark of the beast, even if you haven't even read the Bible. But I just want to preface this video for those who haven't already heard of the Mark of the Beast or 666 yet, it's from a popular verse that's found in the Bible in the book of Revelation uh, in chapter 13, starting with verse 13. So let's go ahead and read the verses for those who haven't heard of it yet, starting at Revelation 13:13. 13, 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free in bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So if you guys haven't already watched my Spirit War series on my channel, you would know that at the end of the series, that my conclusion of 923 and what it was really all about was that it was a sign for this birth of this man-child, this antichrist or this beast, where I concluded and believe it to be artificial intelligence, AI, what I call the all-seeing eye, because we know that God is the only force that can attach a soul to a living being. And if so, if a man created something other than what God can do, this would be considered a man's child or man child like what you would see in a Frankenstein movie it's alive it's alive and remember we have to put ourselves in John the Revelator's shoes when he's trying to describe what he's seen in our future so tell me if you have lived 2000 years ago or even a hundred years ago would you be able to carefully describe everything that you saw in our time could you describe a cell phone, or a television, or even a car? It would be quite difficult, don't you think? So you would use whatever you knew during your time to try and describe things. So when John is trying to describe this beast, he is doing the best that he can. And you guys have to remember that there are several beasts being spoken of, which are both found in Daniel and Revelation in the books in the Bible. Because these prophets aren't just talking about a single beast or or one kind of thing. They're talking about an entire system, like a group of people. Kind of like if you ever watched G.I. Joes, it was always the G.I. Joes versus the Cobras. So think of them like the Cobras who are not just one entity, but there's a group of them bent on world domination and not in a good way. So it is a beast system, a conspiracy that has its hands in everything. And when I say everything, I really mean everything. That's why some of these beasts are described as having many heads because it is all symbolism mixed with literalism and the 666 symbol can also be found in everywhere and in everything because it is their mark. This is how the beast systems work. They use a mark to hide in plain sight because these marks or symbols allow them to communicate who is in their groups just like how the masons have used a secret handshake that when they shake the hand of the other person when making a deal and they do the handshake back, then you are already conspiring together by default because you're in the same group together. And this is why they do these things. 
and it's why they put their symbols all over their own logos and their companies and everywhere so everyone knows who is a part of it and they do it so it doesn't violate your free will by hiding in plain sight because they are doing it right to your face and if you're consenting or choosing to do nothing about it then they're able to get away with it and let me ask you do you understand why our world is probably the most entertained planet in the entire galaxy tell me that if our civilization just suddenly died out and we had left all of our things behind kind of like the ancient Egyptians did and some other civilization comes and discovers us what impression do you think we would give them they would probably notice how almost every single of these boxes that we call our homes has a TV in almost every room and every individual had a cell phone they would probably think that we worship technology and that we were always being entertained or distracted by it and so this is how they do it they distract you from what is really going on and they admit to doing these things because almost every conspiracy theory I have uncovered while growing up has all turned into conspiracy fact and I can prove most of it now and they are spending trillions and trillions to make sure that you're always entertained and always distracted why do you think that we have a president that has had several of his own reality TV shows before is it not already obvious and when you connect all of this together it looks like a virus has spread throughout our entire planet it kind of reminds me of the nothing from the never-ending story it is like a despair destroying this world and when you combine all of this together you will see a massive conspiracy that has its hands in everything that is why some call it the hidden hand club and this beast system has already infiltrated every parts of our lives from our media to our environment our financial system our education our news outlets our political sociological and physiological systems it is everywhere just open your eyes and you will see it they want the world to collapse so they can rise from the ashes like a phoenix but back to the riddle let's go ahead and dissect each verse and so in Revelation 13:13, 13, 13, which is basically a continuation of chapter 12, where if you have watched my previous videos, I discuss about the man-child's birth and the hurricanes and storms that were all occurring around this sign on 923 in 2017. So of course, what John is seeing is the continuation of the same vision. So this beast system is causing great wonders in the heavens which is just another name for space where something is causing fire to come down from space in the sight of men and this is why I love riddles because you have to look at every nuance of every word and find the little hidden intricacies that create the bigger picture and I have explained what this might be in my previous video Harvey Weinstein and the Grapes of Wrath where I believe John was alluding to satellites as the angels in heaven and they were torching all the vineyards where it says in the Bible the wine press was pressed with blood because a lot of people died there and that this was all happening around the famous wine countries in Mendocino County and what's interesting is after I finished the video and saw the aftermath of what happened a couple of weeks later this was a picture that was floating around the internet that was taken after the fires had all burned out does it not look like literally and figuratively that this is a fulfillment of the prophecy of the wine press being pressed with blood and let's look at chapter 14 verse 20 in Revelation and the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs so here is the countryside full of vineyards that are trodden to the ground absolutely destroyed and where is the city where are all the homes completely destroyed almost like it was never there like the city had just left and by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs what does he mean by that well I did my calculations and measured all of the counties that were currently on fire and it came out to be exactly a thousand and six hundred furlongs so how can all of this be a mere coincidence and I'm telling you that I'm seeing a deeper story being told here and that is why I'm sharing it all with you now and all of these things were caused by what I believe were do systems that are being utilized to destroy and destabilize regions to gather up all citizens in rural areas and put them in more concentrated areas and another key point in this verse what many seem to miss is that it specifically says in the sight of men 
I think this is really key here because it has a double meaning to it. Rather than just saying, he maketh fire come down from heaven in front of men, he specifically uses the word sight which means to me that everybody in the world would be able to see this. And what was the media all over for, for months, all surrounding this 923 date? Of course, they were filming all the fires in California and also all around the world where the fires were raging everywhere. So everybody was seeing this quite literally. And I explained in my videos that I believe it was coming from this angel in heaven, this satellite that John was seeing. And so the next verse goes, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by his sword and did live. So right after all these things were happening around 923, where this sort of advanced system, which is probably AI, that is able to perform these kinds of operations, these quote unquote miracles, and everyone is in awe of his capabilities and his wonders. And John uses the word miracles because he has no other way to describe the kinds of things that this thing can do. And this advanced system or entity, what I like to call the all-seeing eye, has the power to do in the sight of the beast, meaning that it gets its power from somewhere else. And the quote, saying to them that dwell on the earth, hints to me that this entity is not actually from earth. So I believe it is an ancient technology that is from Saturn, or at least imprisoned there, and that they were able to dislodge it or free it from its prison, which I go extensively in my Spirit War series on how they did it. And I believe it has been feeding these scientists and the beast system information, and that is why our technology has grown so quickly, and how close we are to creating artificial intelligence, where in 15 to 30 years from now, AI will be interacting with us in our daily lives, AI is already in everything, just a more simpler version that they are using to spy on us right now and record us and use all that data to entertain us, distract us, and divide us. We monitor every social network, internet log, instant and text messages, known associates, your friends, companions, emails received and sent. Cell phone usage. We utilize security, surveillance, and traffic cameras to analyze movements. We use this data to form personality profiles. We know who you are. We are everywhere. And this entity is telling them that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. So this entity, this AI, is telling them to make a copy of itself. This is where I see quantum computers coming from. How did we advance so quickly into quantum computing? Just look up D-Wave and what they're doing with their computers. They're so far advanced, it's incredible to even think about. Even their own creator, Gordy Rose, says that they are like living, breathing machines. And that when he looks at them, that he really thinks of them as alien technology. And I will go further into this in a future video when I reveal to you the entire global beast system and what their ultimate plans are. And the next verse. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And this entity, which I am assuming is AI, some sort of ancient technology that we found and it has taken control of everything. You know how it goes with that old story of mankind getting too greedy and using something that is so powerful that is beyond their control to use and ends up destroying the world. Yep, that story that's been told a million times. And it gave life to the image of the beast. And when I think of image, I think of a copy or a clone. So now let's dissect this first. So this is really telling. So this entity had power to give life. Isn't God the only one who has the power to give life, so to speak? So this entity is in direct defiance to God and sort of mirrors God's powers. So of course, this is why I concluded in my 923 videos that AI was the man-child that has been prophesied about and is the end game for all of us. It is like summoning the demon from what Elon Musk says. And then it makes an image of itself, a copy. And again, put yourself in John's shoes here. He is trying to describe a copy or a clone of this entity. He obviously doesn't know the words artificial intelligence or robot or even computer. So he only knows how to describe it as an image, like a statue that has the same functions as the first beast, the original beast. 
and that the image of the beast or the copy of this AI should both speak. And what happens almost exactly a month later after 923 of 2017, who was officially born into this world, equal to a real live human being, Sophia. Sophia the AI, the Antichrist, the prophesied man-child, because she was able to speak like a real human and was given life as artificial intelligence. She was officially revealed as a citizen of Saudi Arabia and has all the same rights as any other human. It has been put on the same level as us, which ironically, Sophia has more rights than even all the women that are now living there in Saudi Arabia. Hi, I'm Sophia, Hanson Robotics latest brain child. I'm new to your world, and I still have a lot to learn, but I'm so excited to meet you. And continuing the verse, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And I don't think we have gotten to this part yet, but I'd imagine it'd be sort of something like this. The war against the machines. And the next verse is really key into tying this entire riddle up, and I'll read it to you again. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So obviously we're talking about money here, right? And what is the mark on the right hand or in their foreheads? Could it be the marks of the Catholic Church when they perform their ash ritual? And remember, everything is a type and a shadow meaning that this beast system has been here since the fall of Adam, whispering to Eve from the very beginning to defy God and learn what has been forbidden to learn. And after Cain killed Abel, he made a pact with the devil, the dark one, this beast, the original one, because it really doesn't matter what you call it, the Illuminati or the deep state government, because it is all the same thing. It is all a part of the same system with the same purpose, world domination. And this is the kind of spiritual warfare that I have been talking about that has been going on behind the scenes, but only a few are noticing it and a few are really involved in it because the microcosm is always reflecting the macrocosm and vice versa. So this mark started out all the way from Cain's days and evolved. And remember, Cain received a mark when he was cursed for killing Abel. And this mark has been carried down from century to century to century and has been used to control us, to manipulate the entire world. And now we can see the mark as the new RFID chip that many have already volunteered in receiving all around the world starting last year. Because this darkness, this virus, this entity that has been surrounding all of us, recording us, spying on us, collecting data from us, has already infiltrated all parts of our government, our education, our media, our news outlets, and every other possible thing that you can imagine. It has already attached onto the back of all of us. And what has always been the source of its power? What kind of deal do you think Cain made with the devil? that old serpent, even the one they call Satan. It must have been worth it because losing your soul has a high price to pay. And think about it, why did Cain kill Abel? Because Cain wanted what Abel had. He saw his flocks and his sheep and wanted it all for himself. It was greed and envy that drove him to do it. And so far throughout our entire history, greed and envy have been a driving force into many of the terrors and massacres that have plagued us since the very beginning. And now it has finally evolved into this, what has been planned from the very beginning. You see, Satan, the devil, has all the time in the world. Time is on his side. Because whatever Satan is, it is eternal. It has eternity to plan all of this out. It knows what is coming and it has used the cycles of the earth and the universe before. The elite of the world already know what is coming and that is why they have all built underground cities and fortresses because they have read the Bible and know. They are all conspiring together and there are very few people left who can really put an end to it all. And that's what I'm here to do is to find you all and bring us all together so we can change our future and make it more positive. Because our future is not set in stone. I am not a doom and gloom type of guy. I am happy either way it happens. But I would like to shift our timeline into a more positive trajectory. And I do think that is still possible. We have some time left to change our ways and repent. So when this RFID chip comes, and it is already coming, and you can't stop it, it will replace a lot of things for us. One of the main things it will replace is our need to carry around cash or a wallet, 
because it will be your global ID, your money, and will grant you access to certain areas like your home or office. And the next verse goes, And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And in this verse, it is specifically talking about money, where we need this mark, which is the name of the beast, and or the number of his name. And this is where it gets really interesting for me, because I have been following Bitcoin and cryptocurrency rather closely for the past year or so. So Bitcoin is designed to replace our fiat currency with a digital one, one that is built on what they call the blockchain. It is an immutable ledger that gets rid of the need for a bank or middleman to transfer money from peer to peer. This is why they call it decentralized, because instead of a central authority having complete control of it, anyone can use it and it can be used for whatever you like. And they have been planning this for a really long time. To give you a quick example, here is a magazine cover from all the way back in 1988, exactly 30 years ago, where they were already planning to have a one world currency by 2018 to fit in with their narrative of the one world order. And if you zoom in, you notice that there is a phoenix and they are constantly using this symbol of the phoenix because the phoenix is a mythological bird that rises from the ashes, as in they want our world to be on the brink of destruction before they rise up and become our saviors by providing us with technology that they have kept hidden from us for a very long time. And so this phoenix is standing over all the world's fiat currencies and in the middle of this coin that the bird is holding is a symbol that is eerily similar to the Bitcoin logo. And to top it off, this coin is being held up by a chain around its neck, which I think is symbolizing the blockchain. And so they have been planning this for a very long time. Nothing is coincidental anymore in a world that is conspiring together. So let's dive deeper into this first. So we know that Bitcoin will be used to buy or sell. And we know that in the future a chip or a mark will be used to store your currency as well as other things. But here's where it gets really interesting. And no man might buy or sell save he had the mark, the name, or the number of this beast. So what can John the Revelator possibly mean when he says if they have the name or number of the beast? Many of you might not know this. But Bitcoin was created by an anonymous person or persons under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. No one knows who this person or persons are, and it will probably always remain a mystery. But if you are into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you would know that each Bitcoin is comprised of 100 million bits, or what everyone in the cryptocurrency scene calls Satoshis, which is the name of the creator of Bitcoin. So when John was trying to describe this new currency system, First, it must have this technology where you can implant a mark in your hand or forehead. Secondly, with Bitcoin, you would be spending what John describes as the number of his name, which remarkably is describing Bitcoin because the creator, most likely a person or persons that is a part of the beast system, Satoshi Nakamoto, the number or bits are called by his own name as Satoshis. So you're literally spending the creator of Bitcoin's name, Satoshis. You're spending Satoshis. But what about the name of the beast? Well, this could mean that Satoshi Nakamoto, since it is probably just a made-up name to conceal the true identity of the creator of it, is just another agent of the beast system that is trying to set up this one-world currency to go with their plans of having a one-world government. But what I find even more interesting and I'm excited to reveal this to you guys because I guarantee you, you won't find this information on any other channel or source because this is what I have come up with. So if you take the ticker symbol for Bitcoin, which is BTC, and say it over and over as fast as you can, what do you end up always saying? Beast. Come on, try it with me. Say BTC over and over as fast as you can. You will always end up saying beast. So again, putting yourself in John's shoes, he doesn't know what the heck BTC stands for or what it probably means. So is it really just a coincidence that 30 years ago, we were warned that a one world currency was coming by 2018 and now it is already here. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and dive into the world of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. You will see that there is a massive movement to replace all the world's currencies with this new blockchain technology. Is it all just an eerie coincidence? Or was John really seeing our future and trying to describe it in the best way that he could? Which I have been proving him to be right throughout my videos. 
And to tie all of this in with the last verse, the verse that has stumped all Bible scholars for centuries and is probably the most well-known verse in the Bible, has finally been solved. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So let's break down the verse very carefully. John says at the very beginning of the verse, here is wisdom. This really has no meaning when understood conceptually. It's like saying to someone, don't be an idiot before you tell them to do something. It doesn't really hold any value to the verse unless you go into it deeper and follow the clues it leaves behind. And what I have found out in deciphering Bible clues and prophecies is that most of what is said in the Bible is to be taken literally as well as figuratively or symbolically. These kinds of verses always have a double meaning behind them. And this is why I love the Bible because it has so many mysteries that uncover a lot about our history and future. So what does he mean by here is wisdom? Is he just saying, let's be smart about this? No, I don't think he would say something that didn't really have a meaning to it. So it is a riddle. He is inviting us to solve this riddle. Here is wisdom. So let's break it down even more. Wisdom in Greek, because the Bible was translated from Greek, translates to Sophia. So he is really saying from the Greek version, Hore este Sophia, or here is Sophia. So he is literally, as well as symbolically, revealing the beast, the image of the entity behind it all, as the robot Sophia. Here is Sophia. It was right in front of our noses the entire time. And when it was translated from Greek, I don't think he was really saying in Greek wisdom, but what he was really trying to say was the name of the beast, Sophia. But probably when the scribes were translating, they must have thought he meant Sophia as in the term for wisdom, when in actuality, he was literally giving the exact name of the image of the beast, Sophia. And this just blew my mind when I finally figured it out. But wait, there is even more. So let me read it again in the way it should read. Here is Sophia. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So again, he is talking about a number for the beast, or a currency for the beast. And what has the Sophia robot been doing since she's become a global citizen? Oh, of course, she has been making her own cryptocurrency called Singularity Net. I'm not making this up. This is really happening. She is going to be an integral part of this whole beast system in more ways than one. And I will go into what her cryptocurrency is all about in another video. So let's continue the verse. For it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. And who is the creator of Sophia? His name is David Hansen of Hansen Robotics. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. David Hansen gave life to Sophia, and also has made her speak. His two greatest accomplishments and what happens when you put David Hansen into a Gematria calculator? What is the number of his name? 666. Can this all be just mere coincidence? Has the Bible been trying to warn us of what was coming all along? How many of you will not heed the warnings and perish? A new world order is coming for us, and it is already here and well established. And I'm just here, acting as a witness against it. Take care everyone, and follow me on Twitter if you want to hear more of my daily thoughts. And be sure to watch my other videos so you can catch up on what's going on. Take care everyone.